every relationship that you have in your life reflects the one that you have with yourself. So if you don't fully accept yourself, I want you to look at the relationships that you've been in and how you showed up in those relationships and if they were truly authentic, because if you can't fully accept yourself, how can you fully accept another? If you're not clear on what your intentions are, and if you don't have the skills to actually communicate authentically with a partner, get to know them more in a few dates and months, how are you actually going to build a beautiful conscious relationship? The reason um, we really need to, to take a pause and go back within is it's really not about everyone around us, because at the end of the day, you're going to be navigating that relationship for the rest of your life or for the duration of it. So we really need to start listening to ourselves. The dating world today is messed up. You want to date somebody, you are looking for somebody whom you can spend the rest of your life with or at least get into a really long term relationship. You go on the dating site, you keep on swiping left and right. And there are there's an endless supply of people yet. You feel frustrated that you don't seem to find the one that you've been looking for. I have been there. And in the past two years, I have been trying to understand deeply about the concept of conscious dating, trying to understand what is going on here? What's the problem with the current dating scenario where there is endless supply of the people, yet we seem to be not finding the one that we've been looking for. So in today's episode, we are talking all about a different approach to your dating life. We're talking about conscious dating, how you can start showing up authentically, how you can start showing up with vulnerability so that you can attract the person that you have been looking for without feeling the burnout, without feeling the frustration. And I know that seems like a very tough thing to accomplish. But let me tell you this, hey, this thing is simple, but we seem to have complicated this. We seem to have gone wrong in the whole dating scenario. So to help us understand about this, I have invited Neelam Verma. Neelam is a dating expert who teaches people on how to consciously date. She has framed a framework called integrated dating, which is fundamentally based on seven principles which really help you find the one that you've been looking for. She's someone who travels across the world and speaks on stages like Mind Valley and helps people find the right date and also coaches people in how they can approach dating the right way. So in this conversation, Neelam talks about things that you need to keep in mind before you go on any date. What are the kind of conversation that you should be having instead of asking about what's the weather like? And what are the things that you need to be clear on your head when you are approaching the dating with consciousness? And this is one of the first episodes that we have done on the Inspiring Talk about dating, but I think there's a lot of new things that this will open for you. Enjoy the conversation with Neelam Burma. Neelam, I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Neelam, I think I first saw you on one of the Mind Valley's video where you were talking about conscious dating and I'm like, wow, that's a really great uh, topic. And also the kind of stuff that you were sharing really caught my attention because conscious dating and conscious relationship is one of the topics that I personally have been fascinated for the past two years trying to learn a lot about it and try to understand the whole dating scene, right? And uh, for the really, really long time, I felt personally that I'm not ready for dating. I felt that I was not prepared to go on a date or be with a person. And I realized that, hey, you know what, what's going on here? And that made me wonder and explore a lot about this concept. So I want to uh, sort of start off this by asking you, how important is it for people to feel that they need to be ready before they get into dating. Absolutely. By the way, you're not the only one that feels that way when you're thinking, oh my God, what is this dating scene? Am I even ready? And like, what's going on here? Especially if you've been in a relationship 
And then you've suddenly jumped back into the dating scene and the world has changed. Everyone's swiping left, right, and center. And so much has changed. Um, so yes, to answer your question, absolutely. It's very important to, to really stop and take a pause and think about where you're at in your journey instead of jumping into the next relationship to, to learn from what just happened, to learn from your heartbreaks, to, you know, to do almost like a, an autopsy relationship autopsy to think about, you know, what did I gain? What did I learn? How did I show up? Who am I now before you jump into the next relationship? You know, BJ, one of the biggest things um, I find that when people join relationships, most of them, especially when it comes to dating, they, they're not very intentional. And that's actually why I created Integrity Dating is to be much more intentional about why am I dating right now? Am I seeking a life partner? Am I trying to just, you know, just, you know, uh, I'm bored and I just want to invest my time to meet different people? Like why, what is your real intention? Especially in the Indian culture, you know, you have your auntie saying, Shadi karo. you know, your mom like, okay, what about that girl? What about that guy? So of course, you know, I'm, I'm also Indian. I'm a Punjabi, but born and raised in Canada. So I get a lot of that and I understand that. But we get so much cultural pressure. But the reason um, we really need to, to take a pause and go back within is it's really not about everyone around us. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be navigating that relationship for the rest of your life or for the duration of it. So we really need to start listening to ourselves. And BJ, most people in relationships, they lose their compass when they come out of them. A lot of them, um, a lot of the people that I work with, they come to me and they're like, you know, I, you know, I completely lost myself in that relationship. I don't know who I am anymore because they've been sacrificing or they're putting their needs on the back burner. And so it's really important to stop and really be aligned with yourself before you start dating. And that's what integrity dating is all about. I love that. And, you know, like I was saying, a lot of people around me kept telling me that, you know, you should be dating someone and you should really get into relationship and stuff like that. But like I was saying earlier, at the core, I didn't feel that I was ready for it. And when I look back, the reason I felt that was because I was yet to accept myself completely. You know, I hadn't completely learned to accept and love myself the way I want someone to do that for me. And uh, I think, you know, one of the concepts that mm -hmm. you talk about is before, you know, someone can marry you, you can, you need to marry yourself, which I think is another way of you saying that you need to learn to completely accept and love yourself. So why don't you share a little more about this uh, on, on this concept? <laughs> Absolutely. And I first want to just honor you for and acknowledge you for even coming to that realization, BJ, that you, know, you weren't fully accepting yourself. That's huge. So many people are in relationships for 5, 10, 20 years, some for their whole lives, and they're wearing these masks, and they haven't fully accepted who they are. And, you know, I, and that is actually the first piece of my work. Um, so let me just share what integrity dating is and explain why we have to work from the inside out. So it's a, an inside out approach to love where it's all about being in integrity with yourself. So what does it mean to be in integrity? To be in integrity means to be whole and complete within yourself and in alignment with your truth, where your thoughts, your words and actions are congruent and you're the final authority in your life. So when you're in integrity, you show up as the true you. And I created this inside out approach because so many of us are dating externally. How do I look? What does he think? What does my mom want? What do my family want? It's all external. It's this facade as opposed to how do I feel? How do I feel about myself? Am I speaking my truth? Am I being fully authentic? Am I being vulnerable? So I created Integrity Dating on seven pillars. And these pillars are the foundation of an extraordinary relationship with yourself. And the reason I created it that way is because I believe that every relationship that you have in your life reflects the one that you have with yourself. And I wanna let that sit for a moment. Every relationship that you have in your life reflects the one that you have with yourself. So if you don't fully accept yourself, I want you to look at the relationships that you've been in and how you showed up in those relationships and if they were truly authentic, because if you can't fully accept yourself, how can you fully accept another? 
you know, if you're lying to yourself, if you're wearing a mask, how can you actually be fully um, in integrity with another? So it's so foundational to just get this part straight, get you solid. And I spoke about these seven pillars. These seven pillars, BJ, are self-love, integrity, authenticity, communication, vulnerability, energy, and surrender. Sounds very different from what you see a lot of dating experts and people out there saying, they're like, oh, wait, what do you want to text? How do you flirt? What to wear? We do not, I do not do any of that. Everything that I speak about is from the heart, from the soul, from the inside out. And it's really creating that incredible foundation with yourself so you can show up that way for another. I really resonate with what you shared about being authentic and vulnerable, right? And uh, we'll get into the actual dating uh, stage. Before that, I want to talk about before getting into a date and maybe we can later talk about what you should do during the date and then how do you really keep that relationship going? Um, and one of the common things, Neelam, that I keep on hearing from the people around me is that, you know what, I'm on this Tinder or Bumble and I'm constantly swiping left and right and I'm in this endless cycle of swiping and being frustrated because I'm not finding the one that I'm looking for. And while we have so many options than ever before in front of us with these apps and, you know, uh, tools and stuff like that, but why do you think that people seem to be not finding the one that everyone has been looking for? The reason I feel um, that, that so many people feel that way is because they haven't really found themselves first. Dating can be a beautiful journey, a very simple, beautiful journey, but it comes down to you. You need to know who you are first. If you're not clear on your values, if you're not clear on what your intentions are, and if you don't have the skills to actually communicate authentically with a partner, get to know them more in a few dates and months, how are you actually going to build a beautiful conscious relationship? then dating is always going to be, uh, feel frustrating because you're mm. just going to be kind of spinning your wheels. And the other thing is about meeting light, like-minded partners. You know, I speak about integrity dating, which is all about conscious relationships and connecting with other conscious humans, people that have actually done personal growth, people that have taken the time to be like, hey, you know, what did I learn from my last heartbreak? Who am I? What are my core values? What am I seeking? When you start dating people that are like-minded, who are on a growth path, Dating becomes so beautiful, BJ. Like it's such a beautiful experience because you start connecting from the heart and soul. So I know your next question is going to be, where do you meet these people? <laughs> is that where you're going to go with that? Yes, of course, we're going to be talking about where do you meet these people? Where do you find them? Uh, but before we get there, the other thing that I want to talk about is like you said, you know, you got to be authentic and uh, you how you show up with the people and also... Uh, you know, one of the things that you said is, no, why do you want to get into a relationship? Are you bored? Are you looking for somebody to spend the rest of your life with? Or what is the reason that you want to get into, right? And that's, pro that's probably the first thing. And uh, do you also suggest that we should actually look at ourselves and say, hey, what are my core values? What are the things that I want in the other person? What are the things that the person should um, sort of, you know, maybe create a checklist of the things that you want. And, uh, and then when you are going on a date, you are looking for person based on those criteria. Is that something that you recommend? Or is there anything else that you'd like to share? So I have a, this exercise that I take people through. And I ask, okay, first, make a list. Let's make a list. You know, what are you seeking in a partner? Write it all down. You know, it can be a physical list, it can be an emotional list, it can be, you know, someone who's into spirituality, someone who's ambitious, someone who's family oriented, someone who looks like this. Write it all down, BJ. If I gave you a piece of paper and I gave you a list, and a lot of people do this, and they are long lists. And so you have this list. And then I'd like to say, all right, let's rip that list up for a moment, right? And let's get to the real list. Who do you need to become? to attract that person. So that person that you just created on that list, that perfect person for you, they deserve an incredible partner as well. So who do you need to become and how do you need to show up to attract this amazing human? So I put the onus and radical responsibility on you 
for really truly becoming your best self. It's all about discovering who you are, transforming who you are and becoming your best self and dating from a place of alignment. And when you show up that way, you stop even seeking. And it's not really about seeking the one. It's about becoming the one first. Hmm. I think that's beautifully put. So Dilam, here's an interesting thing, right? While we have been having a lot of conversation about we all need to show authentically and try and be who you are in your date. But in these dating apps, um, a lot of us have sort of learned to put the mask on and not put out who truly we are, right? And this is something from my own experience. When you go on a profile and you look at the person and then you realize that this is not who that person truly is, right? That profile is almost like screaming at you saying that that's not who you are. And you are painting a certain picture of the person that you are not, right? Or, you know, and, and probably this is something that we do because, hey, I'm way cooler than I look or maybe I'm way smarter or, you know, and whatnot, right? So where did we go wrong? Why do you need the need to show someone that we are not? And why we want somebody with whom we want to spend the rest of the life to not see the vulnerable side of us? Yeah, it's a very deep and very important question is, why are we wearing these masks to start? You know, I like to use this analogy. Uh, during COVID, we've been wearing all those masks, those physical masks in the world. And finally, we got to a point where we took these masks off and we're back as ourselves. But really, the truth is, BJ, for most of us, we've been wearing masks our whole lives from when we were young. You know, when you're, when you're scared, you have this mask of, I'm strong. You have people that have, you know, a lot of ego and they're, they're, they seem very confident, but really inside, they're feeling insecure. Some people are wearing masks that they're not good enough, but they're fabulous, but this is all the programming that they picked up from their parents, from their cultures, from media. So we've been, we've almost been groomed and programmed to, to, to have those masks. And the reason is because where do we actually learn how to love? And this is a profound question is where did you learn how to love? If I asked you that question, where, if you can answer that. Yeah, honestly, um, for me, I think nobody taught taught on how to love, right? So with my parents, I never heard them say, I love you, son, mm -hmm. or I love you, beta, uh, my whole life, because that's simply not part of the culture, right? And we are not as expressive, uh, you know, when it comes to showing our affection and love to the, to the kids. And probably the way my mother said, I love you to that's me exactly. was through food. Maybe if she just felt, you know, uh, very happy or maybe she would make food that I uh, I absolutely loved but but like in in terms of like teaching teaching I don't think you know I probably picked from movies or I don't know so where did we learn to love we didn't most of us if you were lucky and you had parents that were very balanced and very um, developed spiritually and have, have been on a personal growth path they can they taught you how to show up as a human, how to be in a relationship, how to date, how to love. But if you're like the rest of the planet, we learn from media and Hollywood is over-sexualized. Bollywood is over-sensationalized. You know, we grew up, we grew up on the romantic, yeah, romanticized on the romantic dream. You know, you know, I, we love Bollywood, but we grew up on, on media or Disney movies. The other place that we, we learn how to love from is our parents, you know, and our well-meaning parents, they do their best, but they're just picking up the patterns from their families and parents. And some of them are really busy and working and they don't have the time to teach us. And then we learn from our culture and school doesn't teach us. So we actually really never learned how to love and fully express ourselves in relationship. In schools, we learn math, science, um, you know, English but we didn't really learn relationships. And it's quite baffling if you think about it. And I really, you know, hope that creators of education and who, the, the folks that are thinking of the next generation add this element of EQ in curriculums because this is the most foundational, fundamental aspect of life, relationships. If you look at any study, I know Harvard had a study, it's like, what is the most important 
thing that people look at at the end of life in terms of contributing to happiness. And it's your close bonds and relationships. Yet we don't really learn how to be in relationships, how to connect, how to actually express love, how to date. So you're not alone, BJ. Most of us have never learned. So you know where we actually really learn from? Heartbreak. Heartbreak and healing are the greatest teachers of all. That's where we actually learn. And it's unfortunate that we have to go through that, you know, that low point to grow, but that really is a point of transformation. That's where I went through. And that's why I actually created Integrity Dating. And I'm sure you've gone through some, some heartbreaks as well, but that's truly when we look at ourselves and we start introspecting and, and, and going on a healing journey. And actually that's what I invite people to do is go on a journey to heal yourself. You know, why wasn't I vulnerable in my last relationship? Why couldn't I express and say, I love you? Why was I wearing a mask? That's actually the real work. Those are really great questions, Neelam. Are there any other prompts or maybe more questions that you'd like to share with people that will make them introspect and sort of, you know, have their own reflection? I think the fundamental thing, it all starts with self-love for me um, and for everyone is, is you need a solid foundation of self-love, you know, really honoring and appreciating who you are. And again, you know, I work with a lot of people that have invested a lot of time in relationships. And I've done this myself years and years and years in relationships that were not healthy. They were, they turned toxic. And you look back, you're like, my God, those are precious years of my life. You can't get time back. And that's just an indication of you not honoring your time, honoring yourself, not having healthy boundaries, you know, not fully appreciating who you are, not feeling comfortable expressing who you are. But when you come from a, um, a place of solid, rock solid love for yourself, you don't stay in situations that are not good for you. You exit things respectfully. You know, you have very healthy boundaries. And so that, that is a huge thing. So asking yourself the question is, do I actually love myself? And is this self-honoring? Does this relationship honor me? Is this human honoring me? So that is fundamental. And there's another thing, Vijay, I call what I've created my work integrity dating because that's the other thing is, are you in integrity with you? So integrity dating is not just being in integrity with another. Oh no, it starts here. Am I integrity with myself? Am I in integrity with myself? And so what does that mean? Am I actually expressing what I truly believe? Or am I being quiet because I'm afraid to hurt your feelings? Because who am I dishonoring in that scenario? You or me? I'm dishonoring myself. So am I clear on what my values are and what I'm asking and what I'm seeking? And am I actually living that? Or am I just mindlessly dating and scrolling just because I'm bored? Or am I being intentional? If I say I'm looking for a life partner, a soulmate, you know, a partner in growth, is that how I'm approaching dating or am I being out of integrity? So ask yourself the question, where have I been out of integrity in my past relationships or in myself and how do I get back into integrity? And that's what, that's the work I do. I strongly believe that one of the things that where we have gone massively wrong in simply being upfront about what we want and what are we looking for. And uh, I felt so overwhelmed in my own dating journey with the amount of pressure that you have when you are on these platforms, right? What is going to be my opening line? What am I going to reply to this message? And there's a pressure that, hey, what if this person just swipes me left? And oh my God, this, it's, it's very tough out there. And uh, for me, after that like period of frustration, I sort of took a step back and said that, you know, hey, this is not how I want to get into this. And that's when I personally felt that, you know, it's time to take a step back and look at it. And then I realized that, again, my profile was also putting out something about me, which was not me. And I said, okay, I'm not going to approach it, approach it this way. I'm going to, I'm going to be putting out the way who I am, the truest version of me. And if you like that, then I'm happy to, you know, have have a conversation. And I think, um, and there's no point of just, uh, you know, uh, putting who you, 
who you are are not and especially if you are somebody who's looking for a long term dating or you know relationship right if you're looking for casual do whatever you want to do but if you're somebody who's looking for something meaningful you know as a lot of people who say i'm looking for something meaningful and if you're looking at something meaningful then i think you got to start off um by putting uh, your authentic self and that has immensely helped uh, me in my own sort of experience you've already created an inauthentic connection right from the start by being wearing that mask but just to share what you're saying um you know as a man you were on there and you're afraid of getting unmatched and there's so many people so many men that feel that way but i can just tell you from the female perspective as well doesn't matter how attractive you are it doesn't matter how you show up you still get ghost i got ghost i used to, i was getting ghost and i was like what's going on here and uh, i remember you know like i haven't shared my my journey bj of how this all happened um and we can go into that if you'd like later but i was going to say i remember when i had gone on dating apps after i went through a very deep spiritual transformation you know i had taken i was in a long term relationship um and that put me on a path of of real growth and learning and that's why i chose to create integrity dating and when i had my transformation and my personal awakening and i i got back onto the dating scene and i started swiping and i had been off for almost 10 years i was like what is this and i found there was this plethora there's multiple options a buffet of options but i was hungering for even one one meaningful connection in this sea of options and i thought what's the point of all of these options you only need one and so um what i want to invite you to do is and and you've already alluded to this is to show up truly authentic for example if people are just texting texting is going to go nowhere you know right off the bat i would be like you know i i don't really believe that texting is the best way to connect why don't we just jump on a call right now let's jump on a zoom call let's just see each other right now for the first 5 minutes to even decide because energy is so important and a lot of people are uncomfortable with that because they'd like to hide behind text and that that is really an inauthentic way of dating on and on and on so i invite you to use those kind of hacks for that um and just show up as yourself. You know, you have your boundaries. I want to make sure I talk to this person right away to see if there's even a connection. So there is no masks, so there are no facades, but you got to be bold. You got to ask for it and you got to put yourself out there like that. So Neelam, tell me this. If you were going on a date with a guy and let's say it's your first date, what are the kind of conversations that you will have with the person? Oh. <laughs> um so for me, I believe that The first few dates is so fundamental. It's such a beautiful opportunity to connect with someone deeply. You know, as I mentioned before, I have this this thing that um I teach which is called meaningful questions where you can know someone more in 3 dates than in 3 months. And what I mean by that is that so many folks wait for like months and months, 6 months sometimes to say, "Hey, are you looking to get married?" or you know, ask foundational fundamental con- questions that actually could be asked on the first date. So if I was on a date with you, um one of the most important things I would share is what's important to me and where I am on my journey. So my intention would be I'm seeking a life partner. So I would want to know is this person in front of me seeking a life partner or is are they just, you know, dating around to get to know people and have fun, which is also good. There's no judgment of that. It just depends on where you are at your journey. So I'd want to know, you know, what your intention is and also what your core values are. because I would only want to date someone that's aligned to my values because I've already done the work. I know who I am, I know what I'm seeking, I know I have a vision for my life and my relationship. So I'd want to know what, you know, where you're at. So for example, I would say BJ, you know, I'm really excited to be on this date with you. It's so nice to meet another like-minded person. And um, you know, I took a lot of time to do some personal growth, and for me I realized that my core values are family. uh personal growth, spirituality, fun and adventure. You know, what are what are your core values, BJ? And I would wait and I would listen and I would I'd, I'd hear and if if we're not aligned on some of those core values. For example, if you're not growth minded, if you're not into personal growth and constantly evolving, I would know very early on that you know this person is not going to be a partner in growth for me. And I'd probably ask more questions related to there and that'd be an amazing um signal for me to go do I really want to get to know this person more or do I want to invest my time in someone who's much more aligned so that's one conversation I would have 
Um, another conversation, um, which a lot of people are afraid to have, this is the M word conversation, the marriage conversation. A lot of people are afraid to have this conversation, but it's such a foundational question because when, when, um, when I work with students, some of them are seeking meaningful long-term relationships that are going to lead to marriage and some, you know, may not want that. So that's a really important question to ask upfront. So how do you ask that question? And that question can be asked um, like this, which is, you know, BJ, I, I am excited to be back on, on the dating scene because for me, I'm seeking um, a life partner. You know, I, I've dated in the past. I've taken some time to be single. I've heal, healed. I've grown. I've learned. And I realized I'd love to share my life with someone. And I'd love to find someone who's aligned to my values and vision. And we can just rock this world and have an incredible time. So that's what I'm seeking. I'm seeking a life companion and I'm dating to, to meet that person. What about you? What are you looking for? Where are you at in your journey? So those are the kind of questions I call the meaningful questions that I would ask and that I invite people to ask actually when they integrity date. Neelam, when I'm listening to you and from my own experience, I feel that it's so simple. And why have we complicated this so much? Instead of getting straight to the point, sharing what you are looking in that relationship or a date uh, and, uh, you know, being upfront about it, we just kill time. We just avoid conversations and ha talk about everything else but things that truly matter, right? And, uh, and spend a lot of time, maybe two, three, four, five months before we get to the conversation that you're saying. I think that's such a flip of the approach that you've just shared. After you've invested precious time of your life to find out fundamental things that you could have found out on day one, what if there's a deal breaker? What if you want children and you met someone who doesn't want to have children, but you never had the, the skills or the comfort or the self-love and honoring to ask that fundamental question early on, and you find that out one year down the road? That's a disservice not only to you, but to the other person. And I think it's out of integrity. So I do actually, I do a flip. My flip is let's get back to basics. Let's be intentional. Let's share our truths of what we are seeking. And, you know, it is so refreshing. Dating becomes so beautiful and refreshing. And, you know, you also asked to add to your earlier question about where do you meet people? It's not just the things that I'm doing. Um, you will meet people. You'll naturally attract people. So I believe in energy and vibration, like-minded people attract like-minded people because you start going to the places, you start doing the things that you appreciate, your audience that's coming to your podcast. There's a certain audience that comes here that engages with each other. So you start attracting people as you start showing up a certain way as well. And so the other beautiful thing about dating like that is you're filtering, you're filtering fast. You, in the first date, you're like, oh my goodness, thank you for letting me know you don't want to have children or you don't want to get married because you know what? That's not where I want to invest my time and energy. And so that's why it's so important to do that. Very beautiful. So you mentioned about communication. And one of the things that I want to talk about is conscious communication in dating. So first, maybe you can explain what that means and you can share how people can try to embrace more of conscious communication in a relationship? Absolutely. So I believe that superficial conversations lead to superficial relationships and conscious conversations lead to conscious relationships. So the question is, what are conscious, uh, conscious conversations or what is conscious communication? It's when your communication is rooted in authenticity, vulnerability, transparency, when you actually express your truth and you're not, you're wearing a mask or you're not being afraid. And when you start speaking vulnerably, intentionally, authentically, what happens is, is you set a stage, you set the stage for a profound conversation, a deeper conversation where you get to actually know someone. But communication is something that we need to practice and we, it's a skill that we need to cultivate. You know, I can say to you, I want you to ask this woman, you know, whether she's looking to get married or ask this man whether he's looking to get married. And that's a very direct question. And it can be very off-putting. Trust me, I've done this in front of audiences when I speak on stages and um, I, I do that to gentlemen. And then they're like, oh my God, I cringe. If I say, do you want to get married? It's a little too direct and they want to run. 
but that's not really how to communicate consciously. There's a three-step process where you're intentional, where you're vulnerable and respectful. And what I mean by that is you can, instead of interviewing someone by saying, Hey, do you want to get married? You can create an invitation by using those three steps. And what I mean by an invitation is that your communication is rooted in vulnerability, intentionality, and respect. For example, the same question asked a different way garners a different result. If I say to you, Hey BJ, um, listen, you know, I'm getting older. My biological clock is clicking and I just want to have kids. So, you know, are you looking to get married? Cause I don't want to waste my time. That doesn't feel very good. And you don't want to ask a question like that. It's almost like an interview and the guy's going to be out. But if I ask the same question in a way where I'm being vulnerable and sharing my truth, it creates an open environment and space for you to share yours. So I would, what I would say is, you know, BJ, um, I just want to share a little bit about my background because, you know, I, I was in this relationship in the past and I'm so grateful for everything that I've learned. And I took some time to really get to know myself after the relationship because I had changed so much about what I learned, what I wanted, and I really grew and understand who I am. And now I'm at a place where I feel ready finally to invite my life partner in. And I'm excited to go on a journey with this person. So that's where I'm at in my journey. I'd love to call in my life partner. Where are you at in your journey? Do you see the subtle difference there? Suddenly, you're probably feeling like, oh, well, you know, I actually was in a relationship too. And I actually took some time to learn too. And I actually want this too. And there's a, an openness. There's a, um, a, a safe space to share. And that's what I call it an invitation. And that's what conscious communication is where I wasn't afraid to share with you the question I had. It was very intentional. And I wasn't afraid to share with you and be vulnerable about what I had gone through. And then I also was very respectful to ask, hey, you know, where are you on in your journey? And suddenly it's a really beautiful, beautiful conversation where we can actually deepen it and get to know each other. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. And thank you for sharing that. Because in my own experience, I have realized that if you want other person to be open and vulnerable with you, then I think you got to start with that, right? When you do that, it's almost you are inviting the person to be open and honest in what their expectations from this date or this conversation are, right? And I've always sort of, uh, whenever, whenever I was on some of these platforms and talking to people and they were like, hey, you know what, your questions are different because I would ask, you know, some of the deep questions. I would, you know, and one of the, one of my favorite questions, by the way, is um, to begin the conversation is, hey, what's your internal weather like? And, uh, you know, people would go, like, oh, nobody asked me, what do you mean by internal weather? Like, and I'm trying to understand how are you feeling in life? And that's not the question that you expect somebody to ask you on a dating platform, right? And, um, and uh, the same person would react Absolutely. differently when you ask those meaningful questions. Absolutely. People respond to the level of consciousness that you're at. So just because someone behaves in a different way to someone else, they will behave differently too, which is why I would say, um, I believe in a tabula rasa, you know, a clean slate. When you meet someone, to give them a clean slate, to almost give them an A, to think the best of them and to show up. So often we listen to our girlfriends and our guy friends say, oh my God, I heard this and this about her. Oh my gosh, I heard this and this about him. But you know what? We don't. When we integrity date, we don't listen to the external because everyone else's experiences are different with people. You are a different human. Your level of consciousness is different. And if you show up in a totally different way, a refreshing way, the other person will reflect that back. Relationships are mirrors. And so it's so important that we don't listen to the noise outside of ourselves and we have enough integrity within ourselves to really, you know, show up fully for the person in front of us and to allow them the space to show up fully for us. And this is why it's important to do this work. Otherwise, people are just perpetuating patterns. They're exchanging wounds. I'll trade my wound for your wound. I was rejected, so I'm going to reject you. I was embarrassed, so now I'm not going to share because I'm afraid to be vulnerable. And so we're not going to judge them. We don't judge. We completely give a clean slate. We show up in integrity. We give the other person an invitation to share who they truly are. But I know it's not easy. I mean, it's a journey, but you can go through that incredible journey. And that's, that's what I take people through, through this journey of these seven pillars 
Because once you are in alignment, only then can you actually show up this way. Awesome. So Nilam, share with us something. When somebody gets into a conscious dating with an intention and, you know, like you have already attracted a person that you have been looking for and you are ready to go on this journey, what would that feel like versus what a lot of people might be feeling in the dating scene where feeling frustrated, feeling not finding the right person and stuff like that. What the other other side of it when you approach the dating from a whole different perspective of being authentic, knowing what you want and knowing yourself, what would that feel like? It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's like a best friend that lights your heart on fire. It is so beautiful. It's um it's a it's an immediate connection and an ease and a simplicity and a purity that is so easy that you almost wonder like, wow, why have we ever done it any other way? It it feels beautiful. It feels like two people that are holding each other accountable for the highest growth. You know, hey, you know, you said this to me and it didn't make me feel good. I would really appreciate if you said this, you know, you behave like this next time. It's people that are comfortable speaking their truth and sharing with each other and holding each other. So if one is not in their highest and falls out of grace, the other one will hold them accountable and they will rise. And the same thing for the other. So it's partners in growth and it is so incredible. It's a really beautiful journey. Neelam, from what we have discussed so far in this conversation uh, about conscious dating, I think that's the first step, right? You have set the really powerful foundation of dating with the person. And let's say, you know, you you have started seeing the person Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the the approach, like you said, heart-centered approach uh, to this, right? And when these two people started seeing each other, you know, started committed started being committed to each other. How do you think this foundation is going to help that relationship of two people? And how is this foundation going to uh, help this relationship become really powerful in the longer run? Yeah, for sure. Um, The foundation is the core. If you don't have a healthy, beautiful relationship with yourself, you can't have it in your relationship. And yes, we're going to attract a partner and you're going to start dating But that's not the end. That's just the beginning. You need to have a healthy, beautiful relationship. And then for some, a healthy, beautiful marriage. And it goes on and on and on and on. And so you need a solid foundation to take you through the ups and downs, to take you through the storms, because we all go through those. You need to have your core rooted. Who am I? How do I want to show up in this relationship? You know, and you need to um, really understand that the game is not, oh, I just want to date to find a person. Then what? Okay, great. You found this person. Now what? Now you actually have to be in a relationship. And why are we even in relationships? Relationships are our greatest place for growth and learning. That is how we evolve as human beings. It's fundamental to our existence. So if you're having this solid foundation, it allows you to be in healthy relationships. And you know, when you integrity date, by the way, BJ, it's not only about your relationships are not only going to change with the people that you date, they're going to change with everyone. Because as you start consciously communicating, as you start showing up in integrity and, you know, with a level of self-love and this extraordinary foundation, your relationships with your colleagues are going to change, your relationships with your family, your parents. I have students and and clients that have uh, written to me like, oh, my God, my my boss and I now have the most extraordinary relationship. Why? Because they're having meaningful conversations now. They are showing up differently. So all the relationships in your life change. That's really powerful. And one of the seven pillars that you have mentioned, the last Mm -hmm. one is surrender. What does that mean? Surrender means relinquishing your self, your old identity that you have created of yourself that you've been operating in the world, this false identity, this facade, this mask, and surrendering that and being open to the possibilities, new possibilities, to be open to the universe and allow it to bring people to you and experiences that are different. So often we think that um, we need to find a partner that fits these check marks. He's got to be six foot tall. He's got to look like this. He's got to go have to go on to this education, this school. He's got to be, you know, this culture. Like we have this 
list. Surrender that and be open to the possibility that who God or the universe has for you is so much more beyond what you what you think because you're basing it just on the physicality. Maybe it's a spiritual partnership. Maybe it's someone who has actually gone through such growth and healing that can actually help you become a better human. So to surrender your old identity and these old limiting beliefs, this old programming, give it all away, let it all go and be open to new possibilities. What's your definition of love? Oh, to me, love is the core of everything. Like love is all there is. The purpose of life is love. I am love. And how do we define, you know, some people would say love is a religion, but for me, um, it is just the essence. Love is the essence of who we are as humans. I don't think there's anything more important in existence than love. I think everything has been created by love and from love. So my definition would be love is just the essence of who we are. Yeah. You know, BJ, I feel so honored and grateful to do the work that I do with integrity dating, because as I mentioned, there is nothing greater in this world, at least to me, than that fundamental thing. And I didn't share a little bit about why I actually created it, but I had a near death experience on a plane. I was working, I was a television presenter for many years of my life. I've worked for leading networks around the world in different countries. And before that, you know, I was a Miss Canada. I went to Miss Universe. So I had quite an interesting uh, trajectory in my career. Um, But it wasn't until I had a profound experience on a plane that shifted my whole existence in my life. And I was working as a a presenter in Istanbul at the time, and I was flying to Mumbai. I was going to celebrate my 40th birthday. And um, there was a lot of bomb attacks in Turkey at that time. And something was off on our plane. And I actually thought it was going to go down. The turbulence was really bad. I actually fell when I was on the plane. The lights were flickering. The sounds were just, it was just unreal. And I just thought, oh my goodness, this plane is going down. And I had never felt like that before. And I travel a lot. Um, And I had a very surreal experience. Um, The first thing is I started sending white light around the plane. I had never done anything like that or energy work at that time. Now I'm very familiar with all of that. So I sent white light. And then the next instinct was like, oh my gosh, my father doesn't know where I am. So if I die, he's not going to know where my body is. So I picked up my phone And I had this linear thinking and I sent my itinerary thinking, if this plane goes down, maybe Wi-Fi will kick in and they'll find my body. And then I wrote my goodbye note and I wrote a will. I don't even know how to write a will. My bank account numbers started coming to me. And then in my goodbye note, I just wrote a short note. I'm like, okay, if this plane goes down, I'll press send. Maybe somebody will get it. So one minute, two minutes, three minutes go by by, and the plane didn't go down, thankfully. Um, And everything calmed down and then we landed. But that day when we landed, what I had actually written at the end of my life in that goodbye note was not how I was actually living my life. And it was this huge wake-up call. Huge. At the end of my life, all I had cared about was love and relationships. My parents, my siblings, the men I had loved. Just this universe of people all about relationships and love. But what I was living and doing for the last decade was chasing fame, success, the trappings of the ego. And I had this huge awakening. My heart chakra literally just opened in that moment. I was like, wow, the purpose of life is love. And I made a decision that day to, to live a life of love. And that's why I actually went on this path of integrity dating. And um, yeah, that set me on a very deep spiritual journey where I ended up learning from monks in Bhutan, you know, experimenting with plant medicine, really deepening my understanding of love and relationships. And that's why I brought this to the world. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing this with us, Neelam. So we are coming to an end of this conversation. Before I let you go, for somebody who's listening to this podcast and have a deep desire to get into the relationship and uh, want to attract the person that, you know, they have been dreaming of, what would you like to share? First of all, I want to share my compassion because I understand how it feels to be lonely. I understand that it feels sad, especially when you see everyone else moving on. You're like, I want that, or I need a companion. 
But I really want to invite, if you're feeling that way, to, to really look inwards and see how you're feeling about yourself and to give yourself more love and compassion. Am I taking care of myself? You know, am I taking care of my mind and my body? Am I loving myself? Do I say kind, loving words to myself? Or do I have this, um, this negative thought pattern saying, oh my gosh, you're getting older. No one's going to love you. You've gained weight. Oh my gosh. No, I want you to flip that. And I want you to become your best friend. You know what? I'm an amazing human. I'm doing the best I can. You know, I love who I am. I love this incredible body the way it is for just giving me life. So it invites you to actually take your focus off the outside and focus it on you to love yourself more, to honor yourself more, to do the work internally so you feel good about you. Because once you start showing up that way, once you start feeling incredible, again, you're going to attract people like vibration attracts. You're going to start attracting people that way. So really focus on your growth and your evolution of how you can become the better self. And also another thing, you know, earlier when we started this conversation, we talked about taking the vow, marrying yourself. I would say marry yourself. And what that, what does that mean? That means instead of wanting to commit to another, oh, I want to find my partner. I want to commit. I want to get married. Of course, we, we love that. But how can you commit to another when you haven't even committed to yourself? If you're unhappy and you're miserable, what are you actually going to be taking into a relationship? So commit to being your best friend. Commit to loving yourself till the end of the time. Commit to taking care of your mind, body, and soul. Commit to never abandoning yourself. Commit to forgiving yourself for your mistakes. Make a commitment to yourself. Marry yourself first. Love yourself first, and the rest will flow. Absolutely resonate with everything that you have shared, Neelam, because I have been through the same journey in the past couple of years, uh, having a really low self-worth, doubting that why would anybody want to get into a relationship with me, um, you know, having a severe self-love issues and whatnot. But, uh, you know, to where, where I am today and when I look back, uh, I... I had done a lot of work to get to the point where I am, where I, you know, my self-worth and my self, you know, love, I think it just has been all time high, if if that's even a word or metrics. But, um, but I think it started by me going deeper within myself, asking myself, what is it that I want, who I am, you know, accepting my flaws um, and saying that, hey, you know what? that that's also the part of me right and I think it's just being it's just been such a beautiful beautiful journey and I can't encourage people enough on this one to go within and go on this journey of self-love educate yourself um, and uh, work on your self-worth and once you have completely accepted yourself once you have started uh, once you have learned how to love yourself, I think this journey is going to be even better. You're going to have just a, you know, it's just going to be such a beautiful journey. And I, I, I just, um, you know, can't express this in words. Absolutely. And, you know, somewhere along the line, we all forgot that we are divine beings. You're a divine being. I'm a divine being. We're these incredible divine beings. And we're having a human experience, but we're spiritual beings. And the way many of us, many of us believe in God or source or consciousness, whatever your belief is, we are a part or a spark of light from that. And how could we insult ourselves? How could we dishonor ourselves? We would never dishonor the higher power. So I see myself as an extension of source of God. And I see you as an extension of that. And I see all of us as divine beings. We are gods and goddesses. We are kings and queens walking on this planet. And it's time that we start treating ourselves that way and treating others that way and acknowledging and appreciating. And I actually want to acknowledge and appreciate you right now for you know, taking the time to have this conversation. It's so important for India, but actually the world to have this conversation. But I also want to acknowledge you for having the courage to create this podcast and to share your your wisdom and to connect with others. It's beautiful work that you're doing. So thank you for doing this. Thank you, Neelam. Thank you so much. You're so kind to say that. Um, and I think somebody who's listening to this conversation, there's a lot for them to, you know, chew upon and think and implement in their own life. So I really wish somebody who's listening to this conversation goes back and implement the authentically showing better, understanding 
you know, starts exploring more about conscious dating. So if people would like to learn more and get in touch with you, what is the best possible way? Where can they find you? Yeah, so they can go to my website, integritydating.com. And if you go there, um, you can sign up. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I will invite you to amazing conscious dating events. And um, also upcoming... We should plan one soon in Delhi. Yes, and upcoming courses as well. So go to the website, integritydating.com, sign up there, and I'll send you, like I said, updates for amazing events around the world, as well as our upcoming courses. You can join the course there as well. It's all on the site there. And if you need to contact me, um, I do a lot of work uh, for VIPs and exclusive. You can contact me. Everything's on the website, integritydating.com, or you can follow me on Instagram at Neelam Verma Official. And about Delhi, I was actually invited recently to India to do an event. I was in Dubai. I've done an event in Dubai. I've done one in Europe and I'll be doing them in the world. So maybe the next stop is Delhi. Let's make it happen. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. I link all of that up in the description of this episode. And for everybody yeah. listening to this, I highly recommend that you do check Neelam's work. You can find a lot of her talks and videos on YouTube. Just Google her name and uh, you will find her. You will find a YouTube channel where she posts, put, puts out a lot of content around this topic. So Neelam, I have a last question that I want to ask you. Imagine you are standing on a stadium and this is the largest stadium that has ever been built in the history of the world. And there are millions and millions of people on that stadium. And the catch is you've been given only one minute of the time to share the most important lesson that you have learned in your life. What would be your message? The purpose of life is love. That's it, period. The purpose of life is love. That is the only lesson. You don't take anything with you, but you do take the energy of love that you've generated on this planet with you. So that would be my biggest lesson. Purpose of life is love. On that note, thank you, Nilam. Thank you so much for being on the show and thank you for everything that you do. It's been such a great pleasure and honor in having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you.